Honestly, how often do we worry about global warming? And consider it as an issue. Is it real? There were many who were skeptical about global warming in the past. Some didn't believe that it is caused by human activities. There were others that didn't understand the connection between the melting of polar ice caps and increase in the average global temperature. These people must be still wondering whether any of this leads to extinction of species. Whether we believe it or not, we are already experiencing the dire consequences of global warming. Let's look at some events that happened in the last year alone. Hurricane Ida in the USA, wildfires in Greece, record-breaking snowfall in Spain, cyclones in Indonesia, dust storms in China, recorded temperatures in Canada and Russia, and severe flooding in China, Germany, and many other places. We don't have to go too far. We have already experienced severe and irregular weather conditions here in Sri Lanka. These natural disasters claim lives and livelihoods of millions. It is very clear that global warming and climate change is causing an increase in the severity and frequency of extreme weather events. The recent events in the world were reported in the news as largest, worst, record-breaking and unusual. Since we have already described these catastrophes as worst, are we to look for another word describing worst and worst? Or shall we undo what we have already been doing? For that, we need to understand the science behind global warming. It happens when the average temperature of our planet increases due to the increase in greenhouse gases that trap heat within the atmosphere. These gases include carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. When the temperature increases, big glaciers melt, leading to the increase in water and sea level. The consequence and cumulative, and cumulative effect are what we have already experienced in the recent past. If we are to stop or at least slow down global warming, we need to control the emission of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. If you are the president of this country, you can do a lot at the policy level. But I don't see the president in the audience. Instead, I see many enthusiastic individuals who are eager to do something to solve this issue. So, what can you and I do? Generating electricity from fossil fuels produces a lot of carbon dioxide. So, we should use electricity carefully. For instance, by switching to energy efficient light bulbs and switching off unnecessary light bulbs. If you are using solar power at home, you are already helping this planet. Using cars run by petrol or diesel produces a lot of carbon dioxide. So, if possible, let's try to switch to an electric vehicle or a hybrid one. You also, using public buses and trains is an environment-friendly method of transportation. Cycling and walking are even better. Reducing, reusing and recycling of garbage is going to reduce the burden of waste management and minimize the emission of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. 
These are just a few ways for you to consider. There are many other things that you can do to solve this issue. Not to scare you, but don't forget that we are living on a small island. If the sea level rises by 2.5 kilometers, you will have to stand on the tallest mountain of Sri Lanka not to get yourself drowned. If you happen to know a politician, tell him or her that I told you about this. If we don't take global warming seriously, it's going to be worse than a pandemic, which unfortunately has no vaccine.